This is Half Post Live. I'm Josh Zepps. The world of competitive video gaming has been thrown into turmoil after this offhand interview comment went viral. I don't even care. We're all on Adderall. Like, well, I, don't, I don't even give a fuck. Like, it was pretty obvious, like, if you listen to the comms, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, people can hate it or whatever. Tons everyone of everyone do does it. Adderall at ESALN, right? Yeah. yeah. So, Just throwing that out there. The league has responded by announcing a new policy. It'll start testing players for performance-enhancing drugs. How big a problem are drugs like Adderall for video gamers? And should e-gaming be treated like a physical sport? When does doping matter and why? Just... Joining me are Mohan Govindasamy, a gamer, content creator, and the man who conducted the now infamous interview with Semphis, Trevor Schmidt, Senior Manager for Electronic Sports League America. Dr. Michael Joyner, an expert on human performance, will be with us in just a moment. And in the meantime, Max Melman is here, Professor of Law and Bioethics at Case Western University. Thanks to all of you for being here, and please feel free to jump into the conversation whenever you want to. You don't have to wait till I ask you a question. But uh, Mohan, just uh, kick us off here. When you interviewed Semphis and he made that Adderall comment, did you expect it to create an uproar? What did you think? Uh, not exactly. For uh for us in the gaming industry and, and kind of us who play CS and have done, been doing it for a long time, uh, the thought of Adderall kind of making big headlines is, was a, a bit of a surprise for me. My cameraman, on the other hand, was pretty surprised and uh, didn't know that that was kind of commonplace for people to uh, use stuff like Adderall to play better at tournaments. Uh, that being said, <clears throat> it's partly not that surprising because... I uh, wouldn't regard Adderall as something as serious as steroids, for example. Yeah, how commonplace is it, though? Um, it's fairly commonplace. I, I can't comment on exactly who who is and who isn't using it, but it's it's been a thing that people in competitive gaming have used for a long time. Trevor, why is your organization cracking down on it now? Well, I think legitimacy is the biggest issue. I think we look at the whole infrastructure and, and environment and look at that and say we don't want this to turn into what cycling or the issues that maybe say major league baseball has had we want this to be perceived as a very clean environment and we want people to believe that they're playing in a level playing field i think one of the biggest things that esports has going for it is the ease of access for the entire community to play uh, anybody can play video gaming anybody can you know with very little infrastructure can get in and become a a pro player or at least a, a very good amateur player and, and things like performance enhancing drugs kind of limit that and we don't want that we want it to be very accessible do you have a sense of how widespread it is well i mean we've seen reports recently about how how prevalent much, uh, much it's being used by college students for exams and i think that's very similar concept i mean uh, the regular esports event is two or three days long, eight or eight plus hours per day. You know, multiple matches per day. I mean, think about it in the same way you would for a college finals. You prepare for multiple finals. You need to be studying for them. Players are doing very similar things. So the similar benefits from an, an, an amphetamines or an Adderall, um, you know, has the same benefit for them. And I think we're seeing similar type of usage. So that's something that we, you know, we wanted to crack down on, and we want to make sure there's a level playing field for all players. What's the testing regime going to look like? Do you, have you worked it out yet? Uh, it's, a, it's an iterative process. I mean, the initial step for us is going to be a sweat test. Um, so basically, it'll be a skin-based test. We haven't ruled out more uh, in-depth measures in the future, but for right now, that's our first step. And we, along with the drugs that we'll be looking at, it's a step-by-step -step process. Um, we're, you know, the first step is more to get ourselves out in front, make sure players know that this is an issue that we're taking seriously. And we'll be iterating on that and making sure that it's the best possible testing as we go along. Max, you're a bioethicist. What's wrong with taking drugs in any sport? Well, uh, I'm not sure there is anything wrong with it. Um, so the previous speaker was talking about uh, a level playing field. There's never been a level playing field in any competitive event. Um, people have uh, genetic advantages. They have IQ advantages. Um, last night, uh, I didn't sleep very well, so I'm a little groggy this morning. Um, should I be able? To, shouldn't I be able to take some kind of stimulant to uh, uh, in my, you know, mental acuity? So it's it's never been a level playing field, and the real question seems to me to be uh, the safety of the competitors. Um, so um, Adderall, you know, is a is a is a powerful drug with a lot of um, uh, side effects. Maybe uh, we should protect uh, competitors who uh, are driven. 
to uh, by their desire to win to do things that are unduly dangerous. On the other hand, I don't know if you can see my video feed, but I'm holding up a cup of caffeine. Uh, and uh, if we permit caffeine, I'm not sure there's a rationale for not permitting other reasonably safe substances. Do you think it makes sense to tease out a difference between substances that create a physiological effect that enhance someone's body's ability to push itself to the limits, I'm thinking of cycling for example, versus psychological stimulants like caffeine and I suppose Adderall? No, I don't think there's any, uh, there's any basis for a distinction and uh, organized sports uh, has never made a distinction. So for example, until 2003, you would lose your Olympic medal if you, te if you, had, uh, uh, if you were tested and had drunk more than a 16 ounce cup of Starbucks uh, coffee and two Mountain Dews just before being tested. Um, so uh, uh, organized sports in the Olympics have always gone after cognitive as well as physical performance enhancement. Mohan, how much do you think that, uh, that Adderall actually enhances the performance of individual gamers? Is it uniformly useful? No, absolutely not. It definitely has drawbacks for some players. Like, I think if you have, for example, relatively high cortisol levels, then you might get stressed out using an amphetamine uh, at a gaming event, such as ESL. It's a major gaming event with a huge audience. It's a high-pressure situation. And for some, they might cope with it well. Uh, be able to aim and, and not have jittery hands, but all that's very important to be calm. And uh, it's the, you know the game's not all about reactions, so Adderall only does so much. We spoke to gaming journalist Simon Parkin, and here's what he said about the Adderall trade at tournaments. Within the context of uh, esports, it seems to be very widespread. Um, I had players talking to me about um, Adderall pills being made available for sale at tournament events for you know between nine dollars and forty dollars, depending on the, the the size of the dosage. Mohan, have you seen that the actual trade at events? Forty bucks sounds like a lot to pay for an Adderall. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, this is Max. Can I just step in yeah, for a please, second? Please jump in. Let me just point out, there is one interesting potential difference between some uh, cognitive enhancers, particularly in this comp uh, type of competition, and, and physical performance enhancers. I'm thinking particularly of steroids, and that is in, in sports, uh, athletes uh, use a number of substances that enable them to actually work harder, train harder, put in more effort. And I'm not sure that's, uh, ca that's characteristic of cognitive enhancement in uh, competitive video gaming. Uh, it's an interesting question, uh, actual question. Mm. Dr. Joyner, do we have you now? Yes, I think so. Great. Uh, welcome to the conversation. Uh, can you just tell Thank us a, about the, the potential impact that uh, some of these performance enhancing drugs can have on people in terms of their hand-eye coordination? How would, it, how would it help a gamer? You know, I'm not so much sure hand-eye coordination, but I think most of the data is around people's ability to focus, uh, to stay mentally sharp, and to also uh, avoid fatigue. Uh, these have been studied as cognitive enhancers, for example, for airline pilots and other people involved in decision-making since the 1950s. And the military has been quite interested in it. And there's a long history of people using similar compounds for what might be described as grade doping, cramming, or in other um, uh, types of activities that require quite a bit of focus. Max Melman was just uh, making the point that we, we all consume drugs to some extent or another, uh, be it caffeine or whatever it might right. be. Uh, where, where, in your opinion, should the line be between a regular drug and a performance-enhancing drug? Well, that becomes really quite interesting because, uh, you know, high-dose caffeine, appropriately used, can have many of the same effects as low-dose amphetamines. I think that needs to be made clear, and there are good studies to back that up. So I think you have a couple of things to think about. First of all, what's legal versus illegal uh, from just strictly a practical point of view? Secondly, what is the organization and what does the community want to do and how do they want to regulate things? And then thirdly, how do you enforce those regulations? So um, I think that's something that people struggle with all the time. At one point, training was seen as an ergogenic aid in the in the era of uh, uh, gentlemen athletes. You know, around uh, 1900, and, and people who did manual labor were banned from competition because it was felt as if they had gotten an unfair edge. So our definitions about what is or is not ergogenic change. Trevor, can you? Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. This is Max. I just want Please. to make another uh, important safety point, and that is, I think, an important distinction has to be made between adult use and uh, use by minors, uh, particularly because of uh, potential physiological effects being different in young people than in older people. I think that's a very important message. Dr. Joyner, at what point does a minor cease being a minor physiologically for our purposes? 
I, I think you know people typically would say somewhere between 18 and 21. Uh, but I think this highlights a whole area about what's doping. Is, is the news anchor who uh, gets a Botox injection so she looks younger and can stay on the air longer doping? You tell me. Yeah, I mean, well, Max, do you want to wade into that? Yeah, the Miss America pageant has gone back and forth on whether to have a basically a resident cosmetic surgeon uh, or and indeed whether to prohibit cosmetic surgery on their contestants. It's a, it's a constant yeah. uh, controversy. We see it all the time. I mean, look at the back of the airline magazines for the anti-aging potions. Uh, we now see this incredible black market for Adderall as part of what, what's been described as grade doping uh, for high high stakes testing. Uh, you you see it obviously with performance enhancing uh, drugs in other sports. Uh, there was just a novel compound described in the New York Times uh, today. So uh, people are always looking for the edge, and in, in a world where so much is monetized and there's so much return on investment thinking, once things uh, stop being done strictly for fun and you get into this sort of high stakes mentality, um, these things sort of take off. Does anybody know uh, if the professional poker players are doing this? <laughs> 